May 1, 1943, the North Atlantic. For four years, this ocean has belonged to the wolf packs. German U-boats roam the darkness, invisible, sinking allied ships at will. They are the apex predators of the sea. But on this morning, something changes. A U-boat captain surfaces his vessel in the fog to recharge his batteries. He feels safe. The fog is thick. He is hundreds of miles from land. He is invisible. Then, out of the gray mist, a blinding light hits him. Before he can even shout an order, depth charges are raining down from the sky. There was no warning. No sound of an approaching plane. Just sudden, violent destruction. This scene repeats itself the next night. And the next. And the next. Subscribe for more untold World War II stories. In just 31 days, the hunters become the hunted. 41 U-boats are destroyed. 1,800 German sailors are killed. The Wolfpack Empire collapses overnight. The Germans called it Black May. They thought the Allies had developed a new superweapon. They were right. This is the story of how three invisible technologies turned the Atlantic Ocean transparent and broke the back of the Nazi Navy in four weeks. To understand the shock of Black May, you have to understand the confidence of the U-boat crews. In early 1943, they were rock stars. They had sunk 8 million tons of shipping. Admiral Karl Donitz, the mastermind of the U-boat fleet, believed he was winning the Tonnage War. His strategy was simple. Sink ships faster than the Allies could build them. He had a secret weapon, the Mid-Atlantic Gap. It was a massive black hole in the middle of the ocean where Allied planes couldn't reach. It was a sanctuary where U-boats could rest, surface, and hunt without fear. But in March 1943, the Allies decided to close the gap. They didn't do it with more ships. They did it with science. The centimetric radar. Early radars were crude. They couldn't see a small submarine tower in high waves. But British and American scientists developed a new radar the ASV Mark III. It used a wavelength of 10 centimeters. It was sharp, it was precise. It could spot a periscope from miles away, even in total darkness, even in fog. The Germans had radar detectors, but they were tuned to the old frequency. They were blind to the new one. Suddenly, Allied planes could see the U-boats, but the U-boats couldn't see the planes, the Huff Duff. High Frequency Direction Finding HF slash DF. Every time a wolf pack spotted a convoy, they radioed Berlin. They thought these short bursts of code were safe. They weren't. Allied ships could now triangulate the source of a radio signal instantly. The moment a German captain keyed his mic, a destroyer knew exactly where he was. The VLR Liberator. The Allies took the B-24 bomber, stripped it of armor, and filled it with extra gas tanks. Now, planes could patrol the Mid-Atlantic Gap. There was nowhere left to hide. May 1943. The trap is set. Admiral Donitz sends 40 U-boats to attack convoy ONS-5. It looks like an easy kill. The wolves gather. But the ocean has changed. Every time a U-boat surfaces, a radar beam hits it. A Liberator bomber drops out of the clouds. Depth charges, fused to explode shallow, tear the pressure hulls apart. Six U-boats are sunk in the first few days. Then convoy SC-130 sails. Donuts orders a massive attack. Twenty U-boats swarm the convoy. In the past, this would have been a massacre of merchant ships. But this time? Zero merchant ships are lost. Five U-boats are sunk. The panic among the German crews is absolute. They are being attacked from the sky in the middle of a storm. They are being hunted by destroyers that seem to know their moves before they make them. A survivor later wrote, The sea became transparent. We felt naked. The sky was watching us. The Bay of Biscay, the route the U-boats took to get back to France, became a graveyard. The Allies nicknamed it the Corridor of Death. British Sunderlands and American Liberators patrolled it 24-7. They caught the U-boats leaving port. They caught them coming home. In one week, 10 U-boats were sunk just trying to get to the safety of their base. By May 24th, the reports reaching Admiral Donitz's desk were catastrophic. U-952, 
gone. U438, gone. U226, gone. 41 submarines had vanished in three weeks. That was more than they had lost in the entire previous year combined. The casualty rate was climbing to 70%. It was suicide to leave port. Donuts, the man who believed in the cold math of war, looked at the numbers. And he realized he had lost. On May 24, 1943, he sent a coded message to the fleet. Stop. Withdraw from the North Atlantic. The Battle of the Atlantic didn't end with a treaty. It ended with a whimper. The U-boats retreated. The convoys sailed through. The lifeline to Britain was secure. The Allies had turned the ocean against the predators. Black May was a victory of silicon and circuits over steel and courage. It proved that in modern war, you can't just be brave. You have to be smart. For the German crews, it was the end of an era. They went from being the hunters to being the most dangerous job in the war. Out of 39,000 men who served on U-boats, 28,000 died, a 75% death rate. They are still out there, sitting in the darkness of the ocean floor. 41 steel coffins from a single month, guarding the secret of the time the ocean turned transparent.